This is Emery. Hope you'll enjoy these clips and then we'll stay tuned for a full length presentation. The client's theme was a casual cruise and the topics were leadership, change, and customer service. I'd love to design a presentation for you. Give us a call and let's talk about it. My childhood was extremely annoying. <laughs> my parents were 20 years older than all of my friends' parents. Obviously, a totally disgusting situation. <laughs> and we couldn't afford a television. And so we had to do things like sing songs and write plays and read books and take walks. <laughs> and every night we had to sit around the dinner table, all of us together. <laughs> My friends were lucky. They got to watch television all the time. And then in the summer before I entered the seventh grade, like a Carolina pine, I shot right up to the height I am today and I hated it. I hated it because I figured that nobody would ever marry me. They wouldn't dance with me, so I figured they probably wouldn't marry me either. <laughs> I didn't like one thing about my height, but that wasn't all. As we say in the South, I did not pube very early. <laughs> The problem with my lack of shape was exacerbated by the fact that Mattel had just invented the Barbie doll. <laughs> the classic, original Barbie doll. And I can remember looking at this delicate, feminine, early pubing creature and praying, Oh Lord, just let me grow up and look like Barbie. And I grew up looking a whole lot more like Ken. <laughs> I did not like my height and I did not like my shape, but that wasn't all. My name was Emery. <laughs> Who ever heard of a girl named Emery? A university maybe, a freight line maybe, <laughs> but not a girl. <laughs> and I looked all around me at these delicate, early pubing feminine creatures who had everything that I wanted and nothing that I would ever have. They had the clothes and the heights and the shapes and the boyfriends and the names. Names I was surrounded with like Gwendolyn and Michelle and Patricia and Evelyn and Sarah and Holly and Molly and Dolly and Polly. <laughs> I want to see your hand. If you're sitting in this room this morning and your name is Lisa, would you please put it in the air? <laughs> That's the name I wanted. I would have given anything to have been named Lisa. The prettiest name I had ever heard. It just sort of dances through the mind, doesn't it? But my name wasn't Lisa. It was Emery. And when I was a senior in high school, I got a draft notice. It was not funny. I can remember staring there with that, standing there with that draft notice in my hand, glaring at my parents and thinking maybe they couldn't do anything about the combination of genes and chromosomes that was going to keep me single forever because I grew up in the era in which success for women was measured pretty much by whether or not they were more or less permanently attached to a male individual. <laughs> and I figured that would never be my lot in life if there was a draft notice. One more bit of proof that nothing I had fit, nothing that I had was ever going to work for me. I might as well close up the scrapbooks in the lockbox and the treasures and all the rest of it condemned by the RNA and the DNA over which I had no control. <laughs> I didn't like anything about myself when I was a child and I believed that it would keep me forever from blending in or fitting in anywhere. Have any of you ever felt that way? Isn't life ironic? There is absolutely no way today that I would change my parents' age, my family life, our lack of television, my height, or any of those other things, my fabulous name that my family gave me, or anything else in the world. Because life and experience and the legacy that I was given have taught me that whatever it is that you have that's different is the same thing that contains your power. And I almost missed it. 
The things about you that make you a little uncomfortable contain treasures that are worth exploring. And for heaven's sake, and I say this